Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Little Rock Board of Directors meeting for January 17th, 2017. I'd like to welcome everyone that is with us here in attendance in City Hall as we set about to do uh, the public's business. And with that, let me ask our city clerk to read the roll. I thought I saw her just a minute ago. Mr. Moore, perhaps you can help us. Thank you. I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Director Hendricks, <coughs> Director Richardson, Director Peck, Here. Director Hines, Here. Director Wright, Here. Director Wyrick, Here. Director Compuris, Director Fortson, Here. Director Adcock, Here. Vice Mayor Webb, Here. Mayor Stola. Here. All right, we have a, a quorum. Uh, let me call on uh, City Director Irma Hendricks for our invocation, please. Will we bow, please? My normal prayer is that we will let the words of our mouths as board members will speak those things that are fair and equitable for the community. I also ask and pray that each of us will recognize and support our president-elect Donald Trump in his upcoming administration. This is the prayer that I pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before we get into the agenda, a couple of announcements. Uh, last night, uh, uh, Director Hendricks was honored as a pioneer of the Wright Avenue Neighborhood Association, a, a well-deserved honor for the many years of her dedication to the community and specifically to those neighborhoods in Ward 1. And so I wanted to recognize Irma and congratulate her on that recognition. Thank you, and thank you for being there. You're welcome. <laughs> also, uh, we should be very proud. Uh, last week, uh, the City of Little Rock received the Volunteer Community of the Year Award, uh, which I'm holding up here, which uh, represents over 1.6 million hours of volunteer service that the citizens of Little Rock have given to a variety of organizations in the City of Little Rock. Uh, a, a tremendous uh, contribution. And as we know, uh, we cannot make this a great city without the wonderful volunteer help of our citizens. And so this is certainly a very direct reflection of, of uh, the contribution that our citizens are making to the community, and I wanted all of you uh, to know that. So thank you uh, 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 for all of the help that are not only just to our own boards and commissions, but to a variety of organizations as well. Uh, finally, let me just say uh, thank you to... Uh, City Director Joan Adcock and our new City Director Cappy Peck, who showed up at 7 o'clock in the morning to greet the 1,800 or so um, municipal uh, officials uh, from around the state that were here with us last week, filling up our hotels and providing them a Little Rock greeting and giving them one of our Little Rocks that were traditional in giving. Um, of course, a lot of those uh, folks have been to many of our meetings, and now they've they've got they've cultivated rock gardens, and so they're eager to uh, they're eager to get there at seven o'clock in the morning for the breakfast that uh, the city of Little Rock sponsors, and uh, to get yet yet again another rock. So, thank you to Cappy, and thank you to Joan. Okay, uh, if you will look at the uh, modifications that we have, please, board members. We've got two resolutions and. Um, an ordinance to add, and then a, a deletion of ordinance number 32. Move to add them to the agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second to uh, add the resolutions. Do you wish these to be added to the consent agenda, or do Separate. we wish any discussion on Separate those? Separate for discussion. Separate, okay. Uh, and then on uh, ordinance um, M3. Move which we add it to the separate ordinances. All right, this is also a motion to add it separately for the purpose of, of uh, possible discussion. Is there a second to the motion? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying nay. 
Oh, very good. The, uh, they will be added. And then also, I presume, uh, a motion to delete uh, Ordinance 32. Is that a part so of your moved. motion? Is there a second? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Uh, that ordinance will be deleted. Okay, we can now move on to the consent agenda items 1 through 15. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please read the uh, consent agenda items. The consent agenda consists of a motion to approve the minutes of the September 20th, 2016, October 3rd, 2016, October 18th, 2016, and November 1st, 2016, Little Rock City Board of Directors meetings, and for other purposes, a resolution is set February 7th, 2017, as the date of public hearing on the appeal of the Planning Commission's recommendation of denial for requested plan zoning district titled Shackleford Crossing, Lot 1, Cracker Barrel Revised Short Form PCD, located at 2618 South Shockerford Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, a resolution to approve one operator permit and 120 taxicab permits for Greater Little Rock Transportation Service, LLC, for the period from January 1st, 2017 to December 31st, 2017, and for other purposes. A resolution to make Board of Directors and Mayoral Liaison Member appointments to represent the City of Little Rock Boards and Commissions and for other purposes. A resolution to authorize the City Manager to extend a contract with the University of Arkansas at Little Rock Small Business and Technology Development Center to provide up to two entrepreneurial training courses per year for the City of Little Rock Small Business Development Office and for other purposes. A resolution to authorize the City Manager to enter into a contract with River City Hydraulic Company in the total amount of $2,206,600 forty dollars for the purchase of eight purchase of eight automated side loader refuge tr refuge trucks for the Public Works Department utilizing the National Joint Power Alliance contract and for the purposes. A resolution authorized the city manager to renew an agreement with BKD LLP to provide certified public accounting services to the city of Little Rock, Arkansas for the period of 2016 to 2017 and for other purposes. A resolution to amend Little Rock, Arkansas resolution number 14,349 of May the 17th, 2016 to provide additional funding to complete renovation of an oil change facility for the Fleet Services Department oil change facility and for the purposes, a resolution authorizes the city manager to enter into a contract with D&J Red Iron Aggregates Incorporated for site improvements at the Little Rock Zoo for the installation of prefabricated restrooms and for the purposes. A resolution authorizes the city manager to execute a payment of two change orders for an elderly home repair program located at 2000 East 4th Street and for the purposes. A resolution authorizes the city manager to execute a three-year renewal agreement with SHI Incorporated for core Cal client access licenses and all other software products through a Microsoft Inter Enterprise Agreement in the amount of $896,244.59 and for the purposes. A resolution authorized the renewal of an interlocal agreement for ambulance services between the City of Little Rock, Arkansas and Grant County, Arkansas, which grants the Little Rock Ambulance Authority doing business as Metropolitan Emergency Medical Services an exclusive franchise to provide ambulance services to Grant County and for the per Grant County, Arkansas and for the purposes. A resolution to authorize renewal of an interlocal agreement for ambulance services between the City of Little Rock, Arkansas and Faulkner County, Arkansas, which grants the Little Rock Ambulance Authority doing business as Metropolitan Emergency Medical Services an exclusive franchise to provide ambulance services to Faulkner County, Arkansas and for the purposes. A resolution to re authorize the renewal of an interlocal agreement for ambulance services between the City of Little Rock, Arkansas and Conway, Arkansas, which grants the Little Rock Ambulance Authority doing business as Metropolitan Emergency Medical Services an exclusive franchise to provide ambulance services to Conway, Arkansas and for the purposes. A resolution to make appointment to the Little Rock Planning Commission and for the purposes. That concludes the consent agenda. Move for the adoption of the consent agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the passage of the consent agenda indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The consent agenda is passed. We can now move on to the grouped items, items 16 through 30. And let me ask for first reading of uh, these ordinances, please. An ordinance to amend the land use plan in the area bounded by Interstate 30 and Interstate 530 within the City of Little Rock, Arkansas's planning jurisdiction and for other purposes. 
An ordinance to amend the Master Street Plan to change the designation of three blocks of 4th Street south of Alexander Road from Alexander Road to Highway 111 from Minor Arterial to Collector Standard and for other purposes. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development and establish a plan office district titled R and RT Property Short Form POD located at 13,100 Chennault Parkway, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas and for other purposes. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Stagecoach West 2, Long Form PCD, located at 10,915 Stagecoach Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan office district titled PVK Development Lot B, short form POD, located in the 15,000 block of Canis Road, just west of Canis and Pride Valley Roads intersection, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development. Development establish a plan office district titled Hayes Development Revised Short Form POD located at 13,423 Canis Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled Smith Development Revised Short Form POD located at 7801 Cantrell Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan commercial district titled Hall Davidson Building, short form PCD, located at 201 to 205 West Capitol Avenue, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan residential district titled Levi, short form PDR, located at 622 South Valentine, Street, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for other purposes. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan industrial district titled Little Rock Port Authority College Station Sports Complex. Long Form PID, located on the north side of Sloan Drive, 0.3 miles west of Monty Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan commercial district titled Genesis Datacom, short form PDC, located at 13,008 Lawson Road, Pulaski County, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, an ordinance to authorize the issuance of industrial development revenue bonds under the municipalities and counties and Industrial Development Revenue Bond Law for the purpose of refunding bonds previously issued thereunder to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith to authorize the execution and delivery of a third supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of a third amendment to the lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency and for the purposes an ordinance to authorize the issue of Issuance of Industrial Development Revenue Bonds under the Municipalities and Counties Industrial Development Revenue Bond Law for the purpose of refunding bonds previously issued thereunder to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith to authorize the execution and delivery of a fifth supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of an eighth amendment to the lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency and for the purposes an ordinance dispense with the requirement of competitive selection process and to authorize the city manager to enter into one year sole source memorandum of understanding with the board of trustees of the University of Arkansas and the Little Rock School District for a pilot project rel relative to the City's Love Your School initiative and for other purposes, an ordinance to dispense with the requirement of, com requirement of competitive selection process and authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Optive Security Incorporated for renewal in of the annual security awareness training for city employees and for other purposes. First reading. Who is it's been the rules and placed on second reading? Is there a second? <laughs> uh, all in favor of uh, the motion to suspend the rules and place this on second reading indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Second reading, please. An ordinance to amend the land use plan in the area bounded by Interstate 30 and Interstate 530 within the City of Little Rock's planning jurisdiction. An ordinance to amend the Master Street plan to change the designation of three blocks of 4th Street south of Alexander Road from Alexander Road to Highway 111 from Minor Arterial to Collector Standard. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled R and RT Property Short Form POD located at 13,100 Chennault Parkway. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a 
Plan Commercial District titled Stagecoach West 2 Long Form PCD, located at 10,915 Stagecoach Road, and an ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled PVK Development Lot B, Short Form POD, located in the 15,000 block of Canis Road, just west of Canis and Pride Valley Road's intersection. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled Hayes Development Revised Short Form POD located at 13,423 Canis Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled Smith Development Revised Short Form POD located at 7801 Cantrell Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Hall Davidson Building Short Form PCD located at 201 to 205 West Capitol Avenue. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan residential district titled Levi Short Form PDR located at 622 South Valentine Street. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning <coughs> development establish a plan industrial district titled Little Rock Port Authority College Station Sports Complex Long Form PID located on the north side of Sloan Drive, 0.3 miles west of Monty Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Genesis Datacom Short Form PDC located at 13,008 Lawson Road. An ordinance to authorize the issuance of industrial development revenue bonds under the municipalities and counties industrial development revenue bond law for the purpose of re refunding bonds previously issued thereunder to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith to authorize the execution and delivery of a third supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of a third amendment to the lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency an ordinance to authorize the issuance of industrial development revenue bonds under the municipalities and counties <coughs> industrial development revenue bond law for the purpose of refunding bonds previously issued thereunder to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith to authorize the execution and delivery of a fifth supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of an eighth amendment to lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency an ordinance to dis dispense with the requirement of competitive selection process and authorize the city manager to enter into a one-year sole source memorandum of, memorandum of understanding with the board of trustees of the university of arkansas and the little rock school district for a pilot project relative to the city's love your school initiative an ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive selection process and authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with optive security incorporated for renewal of the annual security awareness training for city employees second reading suspend the rules and place on third and final Final reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place these ordinances on third and final reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Third and final reading, please. <clears throat> an ordinance to amend the land use plan in the area bounded by Interstate 30 and Interstate 530 within the City of Little Rock's planning jurisdiction. An ordinance to amend, amend the Master Street plan to change the designation of three blocks of 4th Street south of Alexander Road from Alexander Road to Highway 111 from Minor Arterial to Collector Standard. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled R and RT Property Short Form POD located at 13,100 Chenal Parkway. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Stagecoach West 2 Long Form PCD located at 10,915 Stagecoach Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled PVK Development Lot B Short Form POD located in the 15,000 block of Canis Road just west of Canis and Pride Valley Road's intersection. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled Hayes Development Revised Short Form POD located at 13,423 Canis Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan office district titled Smith Development Revised Short Form POD located at 7801 Cantrell Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Hall Davidson Building Short Form PCD located at 201 to 205 West Capitol Avenue. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan residential district titled Levi Short Form PDR located at 622 South Valentine Street. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan industrial district titled Little Rock Port Authority College Station Sports Complex Long Form PID located on the north side of Sloan Drive, 0.3 miles west of Monty Road. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan commercial district titled Genesis Datacom Short Form PDC located at 13,008 Lawson Road. An ordinance to authorize the issuance of industrial development revenue bonds under the municipalities and counties industrial development revenue bond law for the purpose of refunding bonds previously issued thereunder to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith to authorize the execution and delivery of a third 
supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of a third amendment to the lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency, an ordinance to authorize the issuance of industrial development revenue bonds under the municipalities and counties industrial development revenue bond law for the purpose of refunding bonds previously issued thereunder, to authorize the sale of the bonds and the approval of the bond purchase agreement in connection therewith, to authorize the execution and delivery of a fifth supplemental trust indenture securing the bonds to authorize the execution and delivery of an eighth amendment to the lease agreement relating to the project to declare an emergency, an ordinance to dispense with the requirement of a competitive selection process and authorize the city manager to enter into a one-year sole source memorandum of understanding with the Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas and the Little Rock School District for a pilot project relative to the city's Love Your School initiative, an ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive selection process and authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Optive Security Incorporated for renewal of the annual security awareness training for city employees and for other purposes. Third and final reading. Uh, Director Hines, do you have a question, please? Yeah, yes. Uh, Bruce, could, could you just tell me, and I don't know if you need uh, Tony on item 21, uh, I just quickly read through the write-up. They're not asking for a waiver or any half-street improvements, are they? It's all, they're going to do the half-street? That's correct. Thank you. Uh, Director Wright? Okay. Uh, all right, very good. We've had the three readings uh, of the ordinances. Uh, for those uh, who might be watching or are here in attendance, uh, typically these are read on three separate meetings, but it is custom and practice in many jurisdictions uh, that if there is not a lot of discussion on these items, that we will suspend the rules and read the item three different occasions uh, all in the same meeting, which is what we just did. So all in favor of the passage of these ordinances indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. The ordinances have passed. And on the emergency clause on item 27, all in favor of the emergency clause indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say nay. The emergency clause is passed on this ordinance. And on the following ordinance, ordinance number 28, uh, all in favor of the emergency clause indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say nay. That emergency clause has also passed. Very good. We can now move on to uh, resolution number 31. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would read resolution number 31. A resolution to transfer title to Jose Antonio Rodriguez by special warranty deed for property sold by the City of Little Rock, Arkansas to be used for neighborhood revitalization programs and for other purposes. There's a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Uh, Mr. Moore, could you just kind of give us an update based on what we discussed uh, pa uh, this past Tuesday on the requirements of the uh, purchaser? Sure. Mayor members board, we have a signed agreement that uh, includes the uh, road uh, not being built out, uh, that it, the developer will build uh, 10 houses within the first two years and others uh, going forward, and they will all be single-family uh, houses. Uh, very good. Uh, Director Adcock, you have a question, please? No, I just made the motion. Vice Mayor Webb? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question uh, because I had a couple of constituents who had some questions, and they wanted me to find out the answer. Um, I have one neighborhood in particular that's more cons that's very concerned with the landlord tenant laws and so they wanted to know are these going to be rent houses are these going to be single family homes that are sold um, let me ask uh, Mr. Tapp to come forward <coughs> Good evening mayor city board uh, <coughs> director Webb it's the the amendment to the resolution states that they can build one single-family residence per lot. It does not distinguish that it has to stay owner-occupied forever. So I would assume that he could build a house and sell it, and then later if someone decides to rent it, that would be their choice. Okay. Thank you. Director Hendricks, you have a question? Yes, I have a question for Mr. Moore. If I'm looking at this item, it has to do, it involves land bank. Okay, would you have staff to provide for me all of these things that is listed that land bank has done, such as remodeling houses or selling houses, if somebody will prepare that for me? You would just like an update on land bank activities? Particularly with regard to houses, it's stated that we have remodeled houses. I want all that information. And if you haven't, then you, you can't give it to me. 
Yeah, we, we're not in the remodeling business. No, first. it was a statement that I read somewhere, and that's the reason why I'm asking the question. Okay. In today's paper, check it out. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Director Wyrick, you're recognized, please. Um, yes, is the applicant here? I don't see him. Hmm. Present. He's not here. Is the applicant uh, on this ordinance uh, present by chance? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. It's interesting. Okay, the resolution is a proposal to transfer title to uh, Mr. Rodriguez by warranty deed of the 80 lots in the uh, Rolling Pine subdivision. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Uh, there's a motion and a second. Director Hendricks, do you have a question on this? Maybe I'm doing it at the wrong time, but I was really concerned about the amount of money. And, of course, the audience doesn't know that, that we have spent on this property. And I hope that we never do this again. Of course, it happened in 2005, the initial purchase or acceptance of this property. And I think a lot of times we sit up here and we talk, and the audience doesn't even know what we're talking about. But I'm just amazed at the amount of money that we have spent on this property. How much money are we selling these uh, 80 lots for? $160,000. $160,000, and we paid 37878 to date while we've held them. Sounds like we're in the net positive on that. Um, uh, this was a donation to the city of these lots, so we did not pay any to, to acquire them when they were put in the land bank, Director Hendricks. We paid thirty-seven thousand eight seventy-eight. Yes, since since we acquired them. Money. So. All right. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. All in favor of the passage of the resolution, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Uh, the resolution is passed. Thank you. Uh, there's. Is there a Mr. Tillman in the audience? Mr. Tillman in the audience? Well, he had s signed up to speak for something, but uh, he didn't put the item on it, so assume, I guess it passed, and, and he's happy, so we'll not worry about him. Okay. Um, we can now move on to the M1 resolutions and the first resolution. Madam Clerk, if you would read uh, the M1 resolution, please. A resolution invites Senator John Boozman, Senator Tom Cotton, and Representative French Hill, the Arkansas Congressional De Delegation for the Little Rock area, to a meeting with the Little Rock Board of Directors to discuss the issue of, issue of sales tax and internet sales and for the purposes. Okay, I've uh, uh, I've got a card uh, that wish, uh, in the audience who wishes to speak about this, Mr. Jim Nichols. Mr. Nichols? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you'll hit your button. Uh, Director Compares, go ahead first, please. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jim. Let me do one thing. Um, <clears throat> last week when or when this came up, um, I was fairly vocal about the poor response of uh, Senator Bozeman Cotton and Representative French Hill. Um, unfortunately, the letter that I thought had been sent out was not sent out. Why it was not sent out is not important, but... I want them to know that I apologize for anything that I said about their poor response. Um, I think this is a great way that Bruce and the mayor have um, set this up to go ahead and try to get them to come, and at least it has heightened the issue, I hope. Uh, but um, I want to, you know, it is hard to impugn someone that did not have a letter stating that they should be there, and so I apologize to the three of them. Uh, but the issue still remains paramount, I think, to our city and what we do. So, Jim. Well, very good. Thank you, Director Pierce. And, and there was there was a confusion. I, there was some thought that there was going to be a resolution, which Mr. Carpenter drafted, and uh, it got circulated to some people but not to all, and so there was some confusion on whether there was just going to be a letter or a resolution with the letter. So uh, I'll, I'll take responsibility for part of that too, Director Compiris, uh, in the confusion of what happened. I didn't get Tom's uh, um, um, resolution, but uh, we thought that it was going out. And uh, 
So we've cured the problem with this resolution here tonight. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Mr. Nichols, uh, you're recognized on this issue, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, uh, Vice Mayor, and, and Board members. What uh, I will speak about is this resolution and that y'all see ask me quite a bit up here, especially when uh, we're talking about trying to get raises. And, uh, uh, but in Washington, D.C., ASME has played a leading role in trying to advocate for the passage of this. Uh, and uh, I have, uh, uh, I gave the mayor uh, a copy and, and Director Comparis a copy, but I, I have some copies here that I'll leave with the clerk if, if y'all want to, to, to see those. Sure, that would be fine if you would, please, Jim. Okay. <clears throat> Anyway, the, the, the bottom line is uh, ASME is a major player in trying to get uh, uh, this uh, passed. The last time it was voted on uh, in the Senate, you know, both Arkansas senators voted in favor of it. Senator uh, Bozeman and, and, and Senator Pryor. Uh, Bozeman is also signed on as a co-sponsor in some of the, the current legislation. But it's important in this type of issue to not only have, uh, I'll say, the corporate support, and I will put the League of Cities in, in that category and the Conference of Mayors and all that, but as uh, one of the letters, you know, uh, all the major unions in Washington, D.C. are also supporters of it, and they can work uh, mainly the Democratic side of the street and uh, uh, others will work uh, uh, the other side uh, of the aisle. But uh, Congressman Womack in Northwest Arkansas has been a strong advocate of this, and uh, uh, ASME at the national level has supported that and will continue to support that. And it's not just something that's coming from, say, uh, a, a city board, but also coming from the organization that represents the employees of these cities uh, and states. So anyway, I just wanted to, uh, since we were discussing this issue, I just wanted to add uh, our voice to, uh, yes, this needs to be done, Congress needs to act, and uh, we still got our work uh, cut out for us and, and gain it passed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um for the updated information uh, from that perspective. Um, also, uh, board members, I sent to you uh, an email this afternoon on a, the latest update uh, from uh, the National League of Cities uh, uh, and their federal advocacy uh, individual who, uh, uh, as of last Friday, got an update on the issue of where it is. It's, um, uh, obviously, you see it passed in 2013 in the House or excuse me, in the Senate by a vote of 69 to 27. It's been bottled up in the House ever since uh, in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Chairman Goodlatte um, has a, a very different way of looking at this issue, and um, you saw the most recent iteration of dialogue about where it is in, in, uh, in the House of Representatives. So we're going to continue to uh, be aggressive on it uh, at every level, and... Um, I will mention that uh, since uh, last Tuesday, I've had a chance to visit personally with both uh, Representative uh, Hill and Representative or, and Senator Bozeman, and they both indicated they'd be happy to come by and visit with us. So we'll, we'll send the resolution and a letter as well, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, two out of the three uh, we've talked to and are, are happy to try and attend uh, and work it out with their schedules. Uh, Director Adcock. Yes. Mayor, could we have all the members of ASME stand that Mr. Nichols represent and who supports this legislation? Mr. Nichols? And I want to thank these people because every day they serve our community and they do a great job for us. And people in the city of Little Rock will tell you that the best thing the city of Little Rock has is its employees. Thank you all. Uh, Director Hendricks, you're recognized, please. I just wanted to add to a part of what you mentioned and to share with the staff, with the visitors here today, that there's more to what the Congress is saying than what the mayor has shared with you all. So I don't want you to be sitting here thinking that something's going to happen <laughs> because what's really happening is that 
this piece of legislation that we're trying to pass, um, it's sort of like two peas in a pod. I don't know whether you know what I'm saying. I think those of us who know me well know exactly what I'm talking about. That there's a problem in Congress with this request that we're asking. So don't be fooled, and, and I'm not a person who will sit here and have people hanging, okay? So contact your congressman and they can tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you, Director Hendricks. Um, all right, um, we've had the reading of the resolution. Is there a motion? Motion by, um, by uh, Director Compeers, second by Director Adcock. All in favor of the passage of the resolution indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed saying nay. Are you passing? Present. present. Okay, please let the record note that uh, Director Hendricks is voting present on the resolution. Uh, the resolution is passed. Uh, we do have a copy of it. If you wish to, if uh, uh, the clerk was nice to add everybody's name to it, if you all would want to sign it, we can circulate it now, uh, Madam Clerk, and then um, we'll we'll see if we can get everybody's signature on that and get it out uh, tomorrow. All right, uh, we can now move on to resolution M2, um, um, and uh, let me ask for the reading of that resolution, please. A resolution authorized entry into contracts approved by the Commission on Children, Youth, and Families for 2017 and for other purposes. Okay, we've had a reading resolution. Uh, Director Adcock, you have a question, please. Yes, I have several questions, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, maybe would it be helpful if he just gave a presentation and yeah. that might help answer some of your questions? That might. Mr. Moore, Mr. do Moore. you have this for the other directors? I've got it. And Tom sent right. it out. Um, we yeah. can get heart. This afternoon, yeah, this afternoon. Okay, I had left. Yeah. I mean, I was in a Let me ask uh, Mr. Dosette to come forward, and um, and then we can pull up the uh, documents as we go through them. Okay, Dana. Good evening, Board of Directors and Bruce Moore, City Manager Bruce Moore. I'm nervous <laughs> because I know what this means to the city, so please accept my apologies for being nervous. What we do... Dana, would you pull that microphone closer to you, please? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. And so what you have before you is the resolution, our first resolution as a result of first implementing the youth master plan for this year. These are the contracts that we first put out. They were for the positive prevention, youth intervention, and our reentry programs. Of course, we're not done with the different RFQs that we do plan to put out. And even with these uh, three contracts or these three resolutions, these three uh, opportunities, we do still have some gaps that we do plan to rebid for. So if you see gaps, that's more than likely what they relate to. What you have here are the ones, though, that based on the bidding process, based on looking at the uh, who actually applied our bidding process, going through the, I don't know why I can't think all of a sudden, going through the RFQ process, but also going through the uh, recommendations of the CYF. That's what we have here to present. And so, as you can see from lines 18, through 30. Those are the different uh, contracts that we're ready to move forward on for positive prevention programs. And then go down to B. Yeah. For B, similarly, these are the ones that are ready for us to enter into contracts for our youth intervention programs. You can see that number eight and nine are actually new programs. We're really excited for that. And I forgot to mention that we did have two new programs, three new programs that also applied under positive prevention programs. Um, under this, they are City of Fire, CDC, 
numbers eight and nine, those would be new programs that applied that have been suggested that we move forward into a contract with. If you go down a little bit further for our reentry programs, you'll see that our house and Goodwill are there. We have had contracts with them in the past, but ProTech, which is also known as the Good Grid, would be a new uh, provider for that contract. And so we worked really hard on this to make sure that our program providers are prepared to move forward into these contracts under the Youth Master Plan. We did a very a thorough job of making sure that we matched the youth master plan to what we would expect under new contracts and to make sure that it definitely matched the youth master plan. And these are the ones that we're ready to recommend moving forward with. And then for those areas that are still left with holes, if you will, we would go back and rebid for those and continue to award contracts until they are full. So we want to take questions on those, and then we have an ordinance uh, to, to enter in the contracts with Pulaski County, or do you want to go ahead and to that one? Yes. Pulaski County is a special situation. What we found this time, especially with marrying everything, is that Pulaski County has a different type of, of way that they have to do things, and that is that they must get approval well, let me go back. I'm sorry. Again, I'm nervous. I really apologize for this. I think you know that I'm normally not like this, but I'm really nervous. Pulaski County must get permission from the from their quorum court before they can enter in a an agreement with us. And that's actually backwards to how we put out our RFQs this year. This year we asked for them, we asked for all applicants to have permission from their board, if they are a 501c3, permission from their board in advance and include that in their application. Of course, Pulaski County could not do that. However, for the different contracts that Pulaski County actually applied for, no one else applied for those. And so we wanted to be able to go ahead and move forward with them as a sole source because they've done a good job for us and this would allow them to go through their normal procedure of getting the approval from the quorum court so they could enter into a contract with us. Similarly also in this ordinance is that we need to actually extend the contract for the Hamilton project at the Hamilton Learning Center. Many of you know that we do have a youth intervention program at Hamilton that's been very successful. We need to extend that to the end of the year. However, because of the youth master plan, all contracts ended on December 31st, and so that one did as well. This will allow us to go until the end of the school year, and then for the new school year, we will have a new RFQ ready for uh, to be at that time. And that's what this ordinance is for. Uh, okay, um, a couple of questions. Um, the FIRE CDC, that's a new program. What What's the background on that organization? Because of the way that we do our bids, I don't have the information with me. Uh, my understanding is that those are sealed. Is Michael here? Can you come up and talk about that part? I think City of Fire is a partnership with um, individuals out at Covenant Keeper uh, Charter School, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so they uh, are in collaboration to uh, under their 501c3 uh, presenting a proposal to serve the, service that area. Well, they're servicing the citywide area? Is that what it says? I think that's uh, citywide, female and male, yes. And what age group? If you have that. Male and female. Age group. Oh, that would be 12 to 17. No, tw uh, 13 to 19, I'm sorry. These are YIP programs. These are YIP programs? Right, they're YIP programs. 13 to 19, okay. Yes. And then they would also, then they, they also have <clears throat> Southwest 6 to 11. The uh, ProTech um, um, Good Grid is that the is that the software company that's here in town? It is, and they're they're going to provide training to uh, ex felons we, yes. in terms of uh, computer training, I presume. Everything that they have to offer, they want to make sure that they are offering to our reentry participants. I see. So it would be a formal a formal partnership with their organization. And their and their proposal specifically uh, answered. Uh, 
the request. So they uh, normally do the protect, you know, the good grid, but they have a specific proposal uh, outlining the specific requirements that, that we requested. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Adcock, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, how does this time different from the others? What did we require under the master use plan that we haven't required before? Several different areas. Um, one of the main things that we required from them was that we didn't want to be the only source of support for any organization. And so we, there was definitely a require to prove that they had entered into a partnership with other organizations. And so that had to be documented. So it could be financial, it could be in kind. There were a lot of different ways that different organizations were able to meet that requirement. It was also to solicit input and feedback from the children, youth, and family participants. In the past, there have been many programs that just provided programming. But if you may remember that the goal number five is to include the youth in their programming and in what they do. So that was another major, um, it was to inform program design and implementation. So that was another major way that we changed things. It was also that with the youth master plan, there are several goals and indicators that they had to meet and match. And so they had to actually prove in their bid that they were choosing a certain goal. Well, there were five different goals that they had to say that in that particular goal, this is what I'm going to be measured by, and this is an indicator that I would be measured by. And so those were other major ways that we made sure that they were following the goals and the, and the information that was included in the master plan as well. Okay. So how many new ones did we have this year? Just City of Fire? No, the other one that we had is Tanglewood After School Program in Northwest, Songbird Multimedia Foundation, and where, uh, on this Tanglewood After School Program, where would parents find that one located? Say that again, I'm sorry. Where would parents find that located? Since this is new out there, um, I'm sure they're looking for parents in that area. And how would a parent find this? Is it in the shopping center or where is it located? I'm not sure of the actual address of that particular program. I'm sorry, I didn't include the address of, the, um, of that program. Okay, for parents who are watching this, when would this list be on our TV channel and the locations that parents can go to apply for their children to be in these programs? No, it should, they should definitely be on there by February 1st, if not before. Okay. On the one for Pulaski County, it just says East Little Rock, West Little Rock, and West Little Rock. Do you know where those locations are going to be? Yes. Oh, the physical locations? Physical locations. Again, I don't have the physical locations of these. Uh, I do know that they already had those locations, so they would be in the same locations. Okay, where in, do you know where in what, West Little Rock or what location? Is it out in John Barrow or is it? John it's at John Barrow, yes, that one is. Are both of them Second John Baptist, Barrow? pardon? Are both of them Second Baptist? You've got two, a male and a age 6 to 11. In the West. I know one's there. I don't know if they got one. Yeah, but this is Alaska County, 6 to 11. I don't know if she's there. There's two. So she was wondering where the other one was. I can find out. I didn't write down the actual locations of where they are. I'm not quite sure if they both are in the same, if they're both at Second Baptist or not. Okay. I'm sorry. I can I can definitely get that information to you. One of them's at Pinnock Boys Club. That's the, where the other one is. Oh. It's at Pinnock. Okay. And then There's also it was mentioned Covenant Keepers with the uh, first group of City of Fire. Covenant Keepers does not start until middle school, so this would be a, a after-school program yes. for children, but not specifically for Covenant Keepers. Yes, ma'am. Correct. I just didn't want Dr. Tam to get upset thinking that we were saying Covenant Keepers had six-year-olds. <coughs> right. No. So. Okay. I think that's all my questions. Thank you, Dana. Sure. Uh, Director Adcock, are you? Yes, I'm complete. All right, uh, Director Hendricks, you're next, please. Thank you. Dana, my question is, are you satisfied with the programs that you have selected? 
I am. We really worked hard to make sure that we got out into the community to find new programs that would be interested, to get them prepared with information that they would need to help build capacity. And we definitely are going to work with these programs to make sure that they are serving the children and the youth and their families in the way that we really want to build our city. So we're excited about these. And as I mentioned, there are still some holes that no one applied for or maybe that particular organization was disqualified for different reasons, but we really feel that we have a very strong slate of, of organizations to work with. And that is what I'm most uh, excited about, honestly, is that everywhere that we've gone, people have been really supportive of the Youth Master Plan. And more than anything, what we want to be able to show is that the Youth Master Plan will work. When you have that many people, both near and far, from community members to even you guys when you got a chance to read it, to say this is really a good opportunity to move forward, then we want the opportunity to show you that it was a good plan and we're going to work it. We're definitely building the partnerships that are important to make sure that it actually can be put into motion and, and actually work. And we have built our staff with the expertise that it will require to actually make it happen. And so we, we have new members on the CYF Commission who are interested in, in working very hard to make this work. And so I think we've put together a really good team of people as well as a really good team of providers that are excited about looking forward and making a difference in our city. I asked because I felt Sure, that you felt good with the program. I have no problems with the program. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Director Hines, you're recognized, please. Thank you. Um, normally I would be jumping in, but since I was absent last week while I was out of town on vacation, uh, CYF did review all these programs. I know we had a big agenda last week while I was gone, so I just want to let the, the board know that uh, if the agenda <laughs> followed suit, they not only – uh, voted on these, but they went through the review process and, and the scoring on all of these programs and, and authorized the, them as well. Uh, Director Wright. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, Director Hines, they met at the West Central Community Center. I moved tables and everything, Bruce, making sure they were comfortable. Um, I have one question. Songbird Media. Is, I've never, is that, that's a new one, right? It is a new one to our regular annual programs. It is not a new program to our summer. They, in the past, they've been a summer program, and what, they've been a successful one. What do they do? Is it what it sounds like, the title? Yes, I do know that. And well, you so know that. I find that very exciting, so. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> they sing, they are on Songbird. social media, what, what, I mean. <laughs> As you okay, it's, it's multimedia Good. performing arts. So they're gonna uh, fit the requirements of. I'm sorry, they're gonna fit you know our requirements uh, that we're requiring that they must meet the uh, capacity, but also doing it a unique way using multimedia and, and performing arts. So. so, Dana, you know, at the new community center, we have a dance instructor and dance classes. Could our kids? Oh, for sure. This is a citywide program. So there's yeah. a, they, yes, any student from anywhere in the city can participate in this program. Okay. Yes. Well, that's good to know. So I can pass this information along to our recreation program and so we can have some other opportunities for the kids. I like that. Okay. Well, I'm excited because um, I know you all have worked real hard on this. I'm glad to see we have a, another opportunity for our reentry. You know, I think that's very, very important that we address that uh, component in our community because we know these people are out there, they're getting out, and they need this training, so I'm very excited about that. I I'm, I'm, uh, have a question about this Bridge to Success. Is that a new one? No, Bridge to Success has been with us for a long time. They're out in Southwest. Okay, and then St. John, Unto Others. They've been with us for a long time okay. as well. They're a returning program. Okay. Well, I'm excited, and I know you are, so I'm looking forward to us seeing some results, and I know you're going to track everything, so yes. when you get ready to report back, we're going to say, okay, good job. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Vice Mayor Webb. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dana and Michael. Is the program that's with the uh, Audubon 
Society in the Pulaski County resolution? It is, yes. Okay, I have some questions about that, and I'll, but I'll hold that until we get to that. In the ordinance? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that was Okay. Um, so, uh, Dana and Mike, thank you. Um, I presume that part of the review process was that for those organizations that have been part of our program, the your ongoing compliance review was a part of that analysis. Is that right? Can you kind of give us some generalizations about that, or did you have a report that you might be able to give to us subsequent that shows us what kind of compliance we were receiving from those organizations? Yes, we can uh, definitely supply that to you. But but that was a part of your a part of the committee's review and analysis. It definitely and you, was. You we felt did. satisfied that the ones that are returning were largely in compliance with our requirements this past year? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, hearing none, um, all in favor of the passage of the M2 resolution indicate by saying aye. I didn't, did I have a motion and a second for that one? No, there was no motion or second yet. Okay, there's, there's a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of the passage of this resolution indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both say nay. Uh, the motion is passed. Okay, on on the uh, ordinance, um, let me see, I think that's next. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that next since we're on this topic. Um, if I could, let me ask for uh, the first reading of uh, uh, the M3 ordinance, please. An ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive selection authorize entry into contracts with Pulaski County, which were approved by the Commission on <coughs> Children, Youth, and Families for 2017. First reading. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place this ordinance on second reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Second reading, please. An ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive selection and authorize entry into contracts with Pulaski County, which were approved by the Commission on Children, Youth, and Families for 2017. Second reading. We suspend the rules in place on third and final reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules in place of this ordinance on third and final reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Third and final reading, please. An ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive selection and authorize entry into contracts with Pulaski County, which were approved by the Commission on Children, Youth, and Families for 2017. Third and final reading. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Webb, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question, and this is, and I apologize for looking at my phone, but it's on an email from a constituent, so I'm having to look at it. Um, she works at the program... I mentioned the Audubon program, and they said the applications were due on the 23rd and the funding ended on the 31st. And is that typically when, uh, is that typically the kind of timeline that we have that the applications are due on the, and they have uh, like one week before the funding is ending, or do we approve usually before? And I do see in the ordinance that it says if we approve it today, then they're going to be back paid to the 1st of January. Right. So, no, that is not how it normally happens. Our intent, of course, was to have it, have these done well in advance, and we worked very hard for that. But the challenge that we had was making sure that everything was done correctly. And it took a little bit longer than we thought it would. Also, there was a slight change or update, I should say, to the procurement process and where they now have a template that everyone needs to match and so by the it just took us a while to get all that language right and making sure that all the dots were dotted and T's were crossed it just took us a little bit longer than we thought and if, as you know we're a small staff and we still had to run regular programs while we were doing this new process so no that is not how it's normally done and won't be done in the future because now we'll have a, we actually have a great process that all of our departments have figured out and the good news is that we will all work well together that's that's the best part we didn't have any issues with working out those details good i mean and, and i'm glad to hear that cuz i am a big advocate for these programs but um you know she raised some questions in here about that and she indicated that they um have not been running their program and that the person who normally runs it is on unemployment and um, they're worried that the kids are not going to come back. Do you know if this is the only 
program that this has happened? There, there have been reporting of a couple of others that did go ahead and close because they were unsure, but that's exactly why we wanted to make sure that programs going forward had partners because we never intended to be their only source of income. Right. And unfortunately, that's what happens when we're their only source of income. And so going forward, again, as we continue to work with these different programs to help them build their capacity and help them build the partnerships so that they never have to close their doors. Because again, even if they're being um, approved today, if they're not following their contract, then of course we would have to terminate the program. And, and but we, if they're if they want to continue, we want them to be able to be able to continue. We want to still help every organization in the city, whether they're one of our contractors or not, build their capacity. That's our commitment to the community. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And I like the partner, uh, the partnership process that you're talking about. Director Hendricks, you're recognized, please. On that conversation with uh, Director Webb and you, Dana. Was that the responsibility of staff, or was this something that's going to be worked out? Because I, I don't want to sit here and think that the staff, the person that was supposed to have been conducting that program, was in error. So I think I understood what you were saying. It's a process. Right, it's a process, okay. and it's one that we've been able to work out now. That, and that's also one reason why we just did focus on these three was because we wanted to get programs up and running as quickly as possible rather than waiting till they were all done. Yeah, I, just, I understand what you're saying, so get that person straight as to what the rules are. Is that what's happening? Again, we're just yeah, trying you to know, be I, I talk plain language. I don't beat around the bush. Thank you. Director Adcock, you're recognized, please. Dana, since New Futures is no longer here, who's doing the monitoring, the capacity building? We're actually changing some of that. So we have a new RFQ that will be coming out that will assist us with some of those things that we no longer have with New Futures. We're also looking to add uh, at least one um, staff member to kind of fulfill that role. We, we've kind of gone through a lot of different roles of who that, what the job would actually be. We're not done writing it. We also do have a uh, part-time person. We do still have our youth master plan specialist that works with us, Tia Mitchell. And so she ha helps to cover a lot of those different areas and make sure that we're not dropping anything. I was going to suggest that you look at in-house to, you know, have a new employee to do that instead of hiring like New Futures or somebody outside of City Hall. Right. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to approve the ordinance? There's a motion and a second to, um, uh, for passage of uh, uh, ordinance M3. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed saying nay. Everyone? Yeah, we have. Okay. Uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Uh, the ordinance is passed. Thank you so much uh, for your support of what we're trying to accomplish with the Department of Community Programs. Please know that I definitely take that seriously. And again, I apologize for being so nervous, but I hope you can appreciate the fact that I was just nervous <laughs> about well, we don't know why, Dana. You got some, some exciting yeah. announcements to make or something? No. Oh, so, okay. But again, thank you so much for your support, and I definitely will be praying that you will not be disappointed. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we move on to item uh, 33, um, Mr. Moore, I've got a card here for commu citizen communications, and I know that many of our employees, ask me employees, are, are here as it relates to a request that Mr. Nichols has to speak during citizen communications. Can you give me an update? I, I, you know, Mr. Nichols has been here twice before to talk about the idea of negotiations, and I told him last week that if that's all we're going to talk about, and, and these are still in negotiations, and I really uh, don't think it's appropriate to be to be brought up in citizen communication again. So can you give me an update? I hate to have people wait around if uh, we're not going to recognize Mr. Nichols. Mayor. Uh, and certainly I understand that they're here because they are concerned about their employment and uh, the internal workings of what your HR department is working with them on. But... Um, so I don't want to in any way, uh, I want to respect that, certainly, but I know you're, you perhaps are still in negotiations. Can you give us an update? I am. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a meeting this morning uh, with the mediator, uh, and uh, that, uh, that occurred this morning, and I'll be meeting with our staff uh, later this week to go over 
the discussions from the mediator, and then we'll make a decision on which direction we're going. Okay, so you're not at impasse, you're in mediation? Well, they, in order to go to mediation, the, the, the union declared an impasse, which is the, the step that's outlined in, the, in our agreement, and uh, that occurred today. And then, um, like I said, I'm going to meet with our staff on Thursday and then make a decision uh, at that point. Okay. All right, Mr. Mr. Nichols, I think that's basically what we've already talked about. I, I recognize you've asked people to be here, and thank you. We understand your... Uh, your concern and our employees' concern about this issue, and we'll wait to hear from Mr. Uh, Moore about uh, the position that the staff, um, uh, uh, the management is going to be taking on this matter. Uh, Director Hendricks. My question is to Mr. Moore. Um, based on what you just said, are you anticipating a firm answer to staff by what time? Today, tomorrow, next year? What are you talking about? Director Andrews, I outlined that uh, there was a uh, proposal that was presented today to the city. Uh, I'm meeting with my staff uh, later this week. Uh, the contract says that once uh, the mediator, once we meet, uh, then the information is presented to me and then I make the decision on which direction to go. Uh, I feel very confident uh, that uh, I will be able to uh, as I've done in the past, uh, this is very important to me, as in to the board, our employees, and, and our overall compensation. And uh, but there are there are factors that I have to weigh, and we're weighing those now. And I feel again uh, very confident that I'll come to an agreement uh, within, if not this week, uh, I'll make a decision by next week for sure. And those decisions would involve income. Correct. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nichols. Hopefully that gives an update to you and uh, the members that are here assembled. Thank you. Okay, we can now move on to item um, 33, and let me ask for the first reading of ordinance number 33. An ordinance to approve a plan zone development established plan residential district titled Stonecrest Apartment, short form PDR, located at 9700 Baseline Road, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, first reading. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place this ordinance on second reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Second reading, please. Who seconded? Seconded. I didn't hear one either. I said I. I know, second. I said, just use me. An ordinance to approve a plan zone development, establish a plan residential district titled Stonecrest Apartment, short form PDR, located at 9700 Baseline Road. Second reading. We suspend the rules of place on third and final reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place this on. Is it third and final reading or second final? Second final reading. Third. Place third and third final, and reading. final okay. reading, okay. Second and final. All right, there's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place this ordinance on third and final reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying nay. Third and final reading, please. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development establish a plan residential district titled Stonecrest Apartment, short form PDR, located at 9700 Baseline Road, third and final reading. Okay. Um, uh, is the applicant present? Uh, do they wish to make a presentation? Mr. Giles, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Stola, uh, Vice Mayor Webb, and all the board members, and um, Kathy Peck, new board member, welcome to the city. Uh, my name is Steve Giles, and I'm representing the applicants who own the property at 9700 Baseline, and uh, they are uh, they're present today, And but I believe that they're mostly technical issues that have been raised and we can uh, we we feel like we're prepared to answer those questions that we've heard from you uh, mr. Jim Martin is the um, uh, project manager and he knows all of the nuts and bolts and is here available for answer question as have am I and the owners so um, I want to thank the city staff for working with us we um, these guys came before you in April um, and tried to rezone it to the planned zoning development, and you know, the board turned it down April 19th. Um, they hired me after that. 
uh, engaged me, and um, I worked with them um, very hard to try to develop a project that is substantially different from the application that you turned down, but it still meets the the goals and objectives of the city in providing infill development and to preserve uh, structures that don't need to be, structurally don't need to be torn down because they're very stable. Um, and we realize, and I certainly realize that this has been a, uh, this piece of property has been an eyesore and a blight on the neighborhood. And I took this project on to believing these, these guys are going to uh, they're going to make the investment that they've said they're going to make, and they will do everything that they possibly can uh, to make this a viable, economically viable uh, credit to this area instead of a uh, blight. And so um, we just think that you know, the, the buildings are there. Uh, it was it was a horrible uh, past, and they. They, they will make a big positive difference. Um, the biggest questions that we have, and, and I won't go into a whole lot of detail because the staff report is very good on this, uh, especially go, go to the end at the December 15th Planning Commission meeting where we, we made some actual amendments to the application to meet uh, some questions and concerns, uh, one of which is now they are committed to offer, they are going to have 24-7 on-site management. Uh, on the property. Um, and th th when it came to you in April, um, Bruce had some real concerns, and I know many of you did, to have that off-site parking on the, other, on the east side of Winston. That's eliminated. That is not part of this project at all. Um, we have worked <laughs> hours and hours to get uh, with the architect and Mr. Martin to, to condense the scope of the project, to keep it on-site right where it is now, uh, and to provide security in the sense of a um, metal fence around all three sides of the, um, uh, the, the street areas and a um, wood privacy sense, uh, fence on the north side um, and also that's gated with uh, three gates, two entry and one exit only on Herrick. Uh, and the gates are coded entries and uh, there were questions raised um, at the Planning Commission and at the agenda meeting last week, and we're prepared to do that. Um, Director uh, Wyrick, you mentioned in one of the meetings that you were had a question about, is there going to be a separate security uh, uh, fence for pedestrians? And there is a separate pedestrian fence outside of the, um, the vehicle entry areas. Uh, there will be that cameras. Was, that was in the first uh, Yeah, April 19th, yes, yeah. ma'am. Um, and uh, there will be security cameras on all sides of the building. Um, the recordings will be made on a daily basis and can hold up to uh, uh, one year, 365. Uh, so that was a question that was raised by the Planning Commission and uh, Alan Bubbis about that. Um, we um, have reduced the number of apartments so we can uh, make all the minimum code requirements, landscaping, parking, uh, uh, setbacks, green space, and we have we've made that in this application that has reduced the number of units. Now they're going to be three bedroom, six three bedroom units to, uh, uh, to bring the, the density down to part where we could meet the 81 parking spaces on site, and we've done that. Um, we 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 had staff recommendation of approval earlier, uh, and and that was changed when uh, Tony mentioned to the planning commission that they looked at the parking on the north side adjacent to those single family homes, and we're prepared to uh, address that. And Mr. Martin can uh, do that, um, but. Um, Director Wyrick, you had the question about does this not represent a loss of housing stock because two homes will be taken away on the north side? Um, and if our, our proposal is um, they have purchased the home on, on Herrick uh, immediately north of this uh, project and they will move it, if, if this is approved, they will move it to um, a vacant lot in a neighborhood for infill development, set it up to code and 
uh, provide that. On the, on the uh, east side, uh, BJ, I think you mentioned that the building is, the property is only four feet from the home. Um, and that, that may be what, uh, they purchased the, the, the apartments, the lot and the, all of across Winston, it was all in one deed, and the, the lot that was just to the north of them on the east side on Winston. There was a home on there, but, and they intended to, uh, that was part of the deed that was on the property. And they had intended to rehabilitate it, and it is a horrible shape. We have some photographs of it, so it had to be demolished. Uh, so that was incorporated in the project. Now they have met the landscape uh, six foot berm and also the, um, the privacy fence to those adjacent homes, and uh, so we can get to that. But um, we're here to answer questions, and we appreciate your uh, thoughts and concerns and consideration to approve it. Director Adcock, you're recognized, please. I think Director Wabick had asked before I did, Mayor. You were the first one to hit. But I know, but oh, okay, Director Wyrick, go ahead, please. I was trying to get to my button. <laughs> she beat me. She's more agile than I am. Um, thanks for coming to explain the details of the project. Uh, can we get this? Can we get the sketch up? The sketch to the application on the screen. You mind if the project manager no. stands next to me because he might be able to. Yeah. Certainly. This is Jim please. Martin, lives in Cabot, done a lot of projects in central Arkansas. And while that's coming up, BJ, I wanted to also say that these are local um, owners and property owners here, um, it, central Arkansas. And they are, they're not uh, out of state. They're not going to fly by night. Uh, they've got a lot invested in this if it's approved, and they're going to absolutely make sure it's done right. Okay. Um, in looking at the sketch on Winston Drive, there was a house there, I believe it was 8809 Winston, and it's gone. Yes, ma'am. We okay. had to take it down. It was actually <clears throat> unoccupied for the last five years. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure how far back the city kept records, but um, I believe one of the neighborhood um, homeowners said it had been vacant for almost 17 years. Yeah, it was and boarded up, so, yeah. Okay. It actually had a hole in the roof, and <clears throat> the interior of the building had actually been stripped of all the copper, and everything was gone, and you can imagine what happens with vacant buildings. But the, the actual structural part of the roof was actually coming down, mm -hmm. and that's why it was going to be, it wasn't going to be economical to save it. Okay. So that house is gone. So um, I'm looking at the north side, which you said it's going to be a, a board fence, wood mm -hmm. fence there. Yes, and um, this property line that I'm looking at, is that, the, is that the true property line? And is it about four foot from the house that's next door, which I think would be 8809 Winston? Uh, what you see is, is the actual representation. It's uh, about a nine foot buffer right there. Um, that, cause that is the, the required buffer zone. Now, as far as the house, it's actually not part of the the, the section of gr or the driveway or parking spaces you're looking at right now are actually about 25 feet inside the property, which aligns them really with the back side of the garage. It doesn't face any of the living quarters of the house, and that's so the this only green space is more aligned with the house. That's. You can't see yes, what I'm pointing at. Yeah, but. Yeah. We actually have a picture uh, of the house that is adjacent to the property. Okay. Um, so I'm from really where the where the head-in parking is from the cars, it's nine foot from the edge of the house. Mm, no, plus their from, bu our buffer zone plus theirs. From the fence? Yes, ma'am. I'm then, not sure what their property line, how far off the house, uh, their house is off the property line. I think it's it has to meet a requirement of at least 10 feet. So it's our buffer zone. I mean, I'm not sure what the. I think it's. I think it's about five or six feet. I looked at it this morning I, in I the fog. I believe photo will. Help okay. Look at that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so on the other side, uh, on Herrick Lane, um, there's a a house that uh, is it 8807 Herrick Lane. That's right next door. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. We that. Yes. Do what? We purchased that house. You yes. purchased that. Well, someone was living in it today, so. With kids, bicycles out front, and all that. You're talking about. You're talking about. Is that my? 
Yeah, as the house is vacant, there's nobody living in it. shouldn't be anybody. We talk, are we talking about the same house that we purchased or the one next door to that? I'm sorry. The, the one next to the apartment complex on Herrick Lane is not vacant. There's someone living there. Shouldn't be. I you saw bicycles. Yeah. yeah it looked like there were bicycles out front and a car sitting there this morning early. You might check it out. Somebody yes, might have. Uh, yeah, I need to see some rent. <laughs> no. Yeah, nobody can hear you down there. So I, I, can, explain, I can explain. Uh, we did. They they were. Uh, they did leave um, on December first. They vacated the house. Now they had called today, <coughs> just today, and made mention they were interested in getting back inside the house. Um, whether, I mean, I don't know if they just ended yeah. up moving in, but they did vacate the property. That's really not my question, but anyway. Um, so the house next door to the apartment complex, which I think is 8809. No, it's probably 8807. Uh, here, that's right next door. Okay, when you look at the apartment complex today, it looks like maybe there's 10 or 12 feet from the stairs that come off the back mm -hmm. building there next to the fence. So uh, what your proposal is, is to take that one house down that's either vacant or not vacant. And then uh, how far does this, does this green line at the top north side, <clears throat> which is supposed to be fence, how far is it from the next house down? Um, I'm not really sure. Do they I think share there's, property? There, there's a lot more space, I believe, on that property than the one over on the other side. But none of the parking spaces that we have face that particular property. It's all directional parking, as you can see. Um, are you taking up half of that lot with parking and landscaping, or are you taking yes. up the whole lot? We're taking up the whole lot, and then we're re-landscaping it to meet our needs for okay. the required parking space. But we're okay. relocating that house, and we've actually purchased some property over on Maryland. Okay. And that's where this house is being moved. So it's it, it addresses both another infill property. Okay. All right. And my last question is, uh, when you come in off of Winston Drive, it looks like you have circulation uh, from Winston Drive through a gated facility, mm -hmm. and you follow east to west, and your uh, your plan is to go all the way down in front of the... There, I guess there was a... Um, place for washing machines, a laundry room, whatever. I guess it's gone in yes, this sketch. It's gone. So you're going along, and then you circle around through the buildings, and you go back to where the parking is. You're showing us your traffic pattern. Correct. When I was looking at it this morning, it looks like to me there's an elevation from this first parking lot uh, down to the second parking yes, lot. Is. Yes, we're actually going to Two transition. feet, two and a half feet, three feet. I mean, it's well, pretty good drop-off there. What are your plans to keep that circulation going with that drop-off? Well, you see where the last parking space is at? We've actually calculated with engineers that it's going to be a transition from there. We're actually paving that all up, and um, that's all going to be pavement right there. And so we did kind of work with our engineers how that's going to, And we're transitioning in. And actually, it's kind of fun, that green space that's there, it shouldn't actually be there. That right there is a franchise uh, agreement we're going to be reaching uh, with the city. The... The actually flow is going to be about another 20 foot this way. Okay. So it actually will be actually a straighter path. So even with that transition going through there, are you going to be able to keep those parking lots, those parking places in front of that building? Yes, ma'am. That's Well, that's why we need that. It's actually all parking lot now. Yeah. And we, uh, I talked to Benny, is that her name? Uh, she actually takes care of the franchising agreement. Yeah. But that red, that red line that you see there, it's actually owned by the city. And we actually have our parking lot is actually presently there now. And okay. um, we talked to them. We had their franchise agreement with the city last time. So we are assuming that we would also get it again this time. Okay. So I just wanted to understand a little bit more about the particulars of the building because I, I did not notice there was that drop yeah, until this morning. I'm going, that's interesting. How do you make the circulation through this with that, with that drop there? Well, actually, on the backside, it's about, you're right, it's about two foot. But mm -hmm. it's more um, like not even a foot toward the, uh, the property line, and mm -hmm. that's where we're going to make our transition. So it'll, we're actually taking about, about 25 feet to transition from two feet, so we've got plenty of grade there. Okay, and you don't lose parking spaces. Oh, okay. I want to read one thing to you from um, a resident that's in that area, and um, 
you know, we got we got quite a few emails about people in the area that were concerned about what it was before. Sure. And um, the the wording is when these apartments were condemned and closed down, it was at its worst. The Little Rock police would not enter unless they had two or more cruisers to back them up. Um, there was gunfire all hours of the day, night, loud music, partying, and one can only imagine other activities. Um, once again, a sign was posted condemning these structures, and it is an eyesore. So I know we've got some residents that are in the room today and probably some that are watching because they, they don't want to go back to the years when we saw that that yeah. type of activity neither there. do we we're going to invest about a, a million two into the property itself yeah. so what what assurances can you give the community that um this is not going to return to the days when they had all that this is a fragile neighborhood sure. and i know they would love to see something pretty to the the beginning of their subdivision but, you know, they're almost willing to continue to have this deplorable, that's a good word been going around lately, deplorable um, building uh, rather than go through the nightmares that they went through before the building was condemned. So what kind of assurances? I know you're going to do 24 by 7. Someone's going to live there 24 right. by 7. I, I think that's key. It's a gated community, and that's for protection of the people that are in the building um, that live there. Um, so I understand that's a good thing. Um, the ones that are, um, the, the two houses that I outlined before have to deal with the parking um, next to their, their homes. And it's, it's gonna be a tight fit. It's gonna be close to where they live. So what kind of assurances can you give them that they still will have a, decent quality of life with this apartment complex going in? Well, we actually um, are going to be uh, vetting each and every one of our uh, clients. Uh, we've raised the rent. It's not going to be on the lower end of the scale, so it, you know we're trying to kind of ease it up so we can get a little bit higher caliber renters. Um, we actually have a, um, we sent our property manager to a, uh, it was the police department put on a, um, a landlord a meeting at the um, Jacksonville uh, Police Department, and we sent our property management over there to learn how to vet and do background checks. And this is our first big project. Obviously, we we own several houses, you know, up to almost what is it, about 150, 150 houses, and we're this is our big multifamily unit. So we, but we do have project managers that are working in house, and they're they are working with us on a daily basis. So we took um, advice from the landlord association, as well as you know, we, uh, our vetting process and and there's our security and we're trying to do the best we can. But it is going to be a learning curve for us as far as what it's going to take to actually make this, uh, you know, a secure um, property. But we think we've taken quite a few measures with the security fence, background checks, the, uh, the cameras, and um, I did actually talk to Chief Buckner. And although we're not going to ask the city to come in and police our um, units, we are going to also talk to him. And I actually have a couple of meetings scheduled with him after tonight's meeting to talk about possibly putting some, you know, some people in there. So. Okay. And do you have um, do you have renderings of what the apartment complex is going to look like? I know we saw some back in April, but I don't oh, know if that's changed or. Mm. Not very much. I mean, well, that's the that's the the building where we tore down, and that was the inside of it. That's what it currently looks like. We actually went back there uh, about a week or two weeks ago and completely cleaned the area up. You can see now that's pretty much what it looks like today. And that's what we're going to be. That's our proposal. Okay. Um, pitch roof. Um, I mean, I think you've tried to do it the right way. Um, it's, um, it's a decent looking building. The first time I saw it, I thought there's no way you could put all that on that one lot that you showed us before. And I said, I don't believe these renderings. So at any rate, um, I think we'll probably hear from some of the residents today 
um, that live in the area. So I guess that's the end of my questions. Director Adcock, you're next. You're on. Oh, that one right okay. there. Okay, the green is a fence, and how much green space? Um, it's the uh, required that we work with Tracy Spillman. It's all nine foot, um, all the way up. That one little sliver right there, I believe it's seven foot, but that's where it's uh, back to. Um, the, it faces the backyard. Everything, and of course, the large green space, I believe, is almost twelve feet. The houses next door to this is usually five feet. That's a very small subdivision. Mm -hmm. It was a very inexpensive subdivision. It was built before the city took that property into the city as these apartments was built before it came into the city. So they do not meet a lots of city's requirements. Mm -hmm. um, my big problem is that this has taken up the neighborhood. Your exit over here where you're going out, mm -hmm. that's right down in the neighborhood. Um, that's actually where the house that we're moving is. And so it's about approximately 35 to 40 feet. But there's houses across the street from these. You're not buying the houses across the street. Well, no, ma'am, we're not. Okay. So you're right in, you're taking this traffic out of these apartments into a neighborhood. Well, it's right there at the very end of the street. So, I mean, we're, there may be one, maybe two houses that would be affected. One complaint I've had on these is this is very close to the highway department, and as high up as the highway department is, they look down on these. They also look down Mr. Carpenter on a tire store that has been turned in several times and is in court because it, they have a hard time cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. We have people working in that building that remembers when they used to work down, look down on this and see drug deals and lots of other illegal activities. The highway department is considering moving out to North Little Rock where Garver and Garver is because they're tired of some of the things going on in this neighborhood. So I can see these cars coming out of this complex, going right down to the neighborhood to make it down to the neighborhood, come back up and make a right onto West Baseline. Coming out, coming straight out there, you've got all the traffic for the highway department, that tire store, and the traffic going over the Vidoc. So the easiest way to get out of this apartment complex is going straight down um, Winston, and then coming back up Herrick, and then going down West Baseline. Um, I don't see that. The only exit out there is, you've got an exit right there at the baseline of uh, Winston, and that also at Herrick, and it's about, like I said, 40 feet. So it really only comes out about where the first house or the second house is on, on Herrick. But to come out of that and going, instead of coming down and going down into the traffic there, you've got the highway department, you've got that tire store, you've got the freeway, traffic right there going, coming off and coming on. So to get out of this, you would go to the neighborhood and down Herrick and make a right onto West Baseline. That would be how most people would get out or either go straight across out the uh, Vidoc over to the highway. That would be the long way around because they can just make that path right there and come out Winston that way so they wouldn't have to go through the... Into all that traffic. Well, well I mean, they have to get out. Okay, I mean, another item on this. This down at the bottom, what is this black and white hashtag down here on the bottom? Uh, that's uh, state property. So you're going to be parking those automobiles right there next to state park. Is there mm, a fence there? Yes, ma'am. That's going to be your wrought iron fence. Is it going to sit back or are you going to take in the state property like you want to take in the cities? No, ma'am, we can't take it. We've already talked to Dan Ivey and we're putting right where the uh, property line is right now. <clears throat> it's pre existing. Mr. Moore, on this property that belongs to the city, how they could be able to get that property and use it? Isn't it Which right away? Which property are you referring to? Uh, right here, this red line. You see the black and white on the bottom, the little hash. It's a property over to the left that's in that red rectangle. I think that's the property that belongs to the city that they're hoping to get a franchise for. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Okay, that's... Uh, Tony or John, are we, are we aware of that? Okay. John. Yeah, well, if you'll put, if you'll put the, um, the front of baseline, the second, it's, a, it's one of the pictures of the, I think it's easier to explain that way. Next. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, sorry. 
Um, one more. Keep going. Right there. What you see right now is the existing parking lot. Mm -hmm. that, um, I, that picture doesn't actually show you the whole parking lot. There's actually a row of trees right there. That is already part of the parking lot structure now. It's actually, par it's actually part of the city, but it's already paved and part of our parking place. So is the city's property going to be inside your fence? Um, well, yes, ma'am. We'll have uh, the franchise, but you have total rights to it. <coughs> Mr. Moore, if our property is inside their fence and we have total rights to it, what does that mean? Director Eric, I, uh, I'm going to let Mr. Honeywell come forward and, and talk about it. This is a, uh, they would have to have a franchise agreement. They're going to have to dedicate right of way along the street. And when they dedicate the right of way, it becomes the city's property. And then in order to do their parking, they would need a franchise, John. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board Members, Director Adcock, uh, just like Mr. Moore said, uh, their existing parking lot pavement now uh, is not in our right-of-way. As part of this development, they're required to dedicate right-of-way uh, to the city. That puts this section of the parking lot that we're talking about franchising into the city right-of-way. Uh, so through this franchise process, it allows them to use that uh, existing parking lot as parking. Uh, but since it's franchised, if we ever have any reason that we need to uh, change that use, uh, use that property for the city's purposes, we have the right to go in and do that. That's what the franchise allows us to do. Okay. Do we get a fee for our franchise? Uh, it's a $75 fee for the franchise permit. Okay, but we do not make anything like rent or anything off of it? No, ma'am. Okay. Where else in the city do we do this in apartment complexes? Uh, that I don't know off the top we of my head. Down. I apologize. Okay. okay, thank you. But there are similar situations to this. Okay. Okay. You say that you went to Jacksonville for a landlord meeting? Yeah. Okay, is there any reason you're not attending the landlord meetings in Little Rock? Well, we actually live in Jacksonville. Most of our properties are here, so, but we actually will join the Little Rock uh, Landlord Association. But um, all of our properties are in Jacksonville, and that was the closest to home. So, so this is your first property in Little Rock? Oh, no, we have several properties. We have a few properties, not many. In Little Rock? But in your in first apartment Rock. complex. Yes. This is our first multifamily, yes. We have some duplexes, but nothing to, to this scale. Okay, thank you. Director Hendricks, you're recognized, please. I guess I am. Uh, the thing that I wanted, I need to talk to Tony Brzezinski. Uh, Tony, if you come forward, please. And I would also ask, if I'm out of order, Mr. Carpenter, if you would notify that, because I've heard several comments today were strictly out of order. I do know parliamentary procedure. Director Hendricks, I understand that, but... No, I'm not talking to you. When I asked you to come to the microphone, you didn't say anything. Tony, can you tell me what has happened uh, since the applicant was here some time ago. Director Hendricks, um, in terms, originally the plan before the board back in April of last year included a parking area on the east side of Winston, which on this sketch in front of you is the area that just has red lines around it without any type of parking depicted or anything like that. So that's one that's been removed from the plan that's before you. Then also they have reduced the number of units. Originally, I think it was 61 units. Now it's 54 units. And as Mr. Giles uh, stated, um, there are some three bedroom and the rest, uh, I think six three bedrooms and the rest are one bedrooms. And they have uh, their with the purchase. If if this is if they're successful with this application, they'll purchase that house on Herrick, or if they they have purchased it. Let me it, ask you this, Tony. Uh, when this applicant came before us for first, was it approved or denied? This board denied that application. No, did you approve it or deny it as staff? We recommended denial. Okay. Thanks, that's all I need to say. Uh, the thing that I'm concerned about is that 
I can't even begin to count the number of apartments that have been built downtown in Ward 1. Nobody said a D word about it, if you know what the word D means. And I think it's unfair to the applicant. I think that we should be consistent in what we do. Uh, I think that from the conversation that I've heard, it seems that this uh, applicant is actually being discriminated against. And if you know what I'm saying, you need to take action. They have complied, it seems, with whatever has been asked of them. And then when I hear the question asked of the applicant, can you guarantee who's coming in there? No. If that's the case, I could guarantee you that there would not have been any shooting in my neighborhood. Nobody can guarantee that. So I'm speaking to the board. We need to stop playing games with applicants. And I think that applicants need to take heed to what's happening. We're not God up here. We're human beings who make bad mistakes. That's all I got to say. Director Wright, you're recognized, please. Can I see the, the, the pictures to show where the uh, neighborhood is behind here? Because in the past, whenever I passed it, all I could see was the derelict houses on either side of it. No, this was a live picture. Just, yeah, scroll back. Okay, so so there's a fence along this line of trees at the rear of the property. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And the house that you purchased was where? On this vacant lot right here? On the left, on the left, on Eric. Come forward, please. The picture doesn't show that. The house that we purchased was on Herrick, and it was directly, um, it was like Ms. Edcock had explained earlier, it was almost right on top of the, the property. But we, That's the one I recall. It used to have old junk car in the driveway. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, the one you purchased on, or planning to purchase on. We actually purchased it already. Okay. Where is it? That's Herrick. That's the one that we've actually purchased. We've only made, we've only made one purchase in that in that. Which one are you planning to purchase? Is there uh, something we've on We've already Winston? made all the purchases that we're going to make. Did you purchase anything behind here? No, ma'am. We just the one that we just purchased um, on Herrick. That's the house of Jason. I believe it was eighty-eight, oh seven. I think I can't remember. I that. I thought y'all said you purchased some and tore it down, or you? Well, no. We the only point of house that we tore down was it was part of the property. Oh, it was a part of your property. Yes, ma'am. Okay, was, I got you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that was the condemned. Well, not wasn't condemned, but it was the boarded up house. So the concern is that I've heard is that people are going to be entering. They can circle the building, and they can exit. And because of the traffic out here, the concern is that they'll go back into the neighborhood, make a loop, and come back out. That would be the long way around. I mean, if you're inside the complex. But, I mean, if they're part of the, the street, you know, they have a right to use the street. Yes, that, that is true. I mean... But if okay. you if they made the circle a couple of times, they'll quickly figure out that if that's they a long to, way around. Okay, long way around. Okay. Okay, I think I got my bearings now. So what is this? This is just a tree covered area. Is there a house right there? Where's that? Where those trees are, beside the. That's a, that's a, that's a house. On, are you talking about on Herrick? Where there was that right no, now? No, on Winston. On um, Winston, yes, ma'am, there is one house that is right behind the privacy fence. I believe it's, like Ms. Uh, Adcock said, about five feet off, and that's the garage no, side. okay, when you're turning on the street, on the right side, where those trees are, what uh -huh. is there? Those are houses, but on that green stretch, there's nothing going there. I understand that, sir. I'm asking what's behind it, where the trees are. How, those are all houses. Houses, yes, okay. Confused on where you're pointing at, but. Looks, I can only see one unless it must be covered by the trees. Well, oh, there's a grassy area, and then there are trees immediately to the north of it, and that's where the houses are, right? Yes, sir. Right un underneath the trees. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
I guess that handles most of the questions that the board members have. Uh, one second, Mr. Martin. Uh, are you, I assume you're going to be resurfacing and re resurfacing Absolutely. all of the parking area? Completely brand spanking new parking lot. And uh, um, uh, are these going to be market rate apartments? Yeah, uh, they're going to be above market rate, actually. I think the market rate's going for about 430 and we're going to be right at about 500 500 a month? Mm-hmm. And you think that's market rate? We're Sounds a little low to me, actually, but... Well, I think the market rate is about 430 and we plan to... Um... Well, I, I'm just asking if he's willing to tell us. That's oh, I know it well, can't be considered... As far as one bedroom units down baseline, the market rate that we That's have seen from saying. just calling the local apartments there is anywhere from 395 to 430. I see. That's where we're coming with our market rate, just down baseline. All right, very good, thank you. The mayor also, uh, you mentioned about redoing all the, the, the asphalt, taking all that up and putting new down. And I uh, believe you all have said that you're also gonna do that on that vacant lot that's not yes. part of this project we'll and then it. just seed it. Uh, with for grass, take all that busted asphalt up and uh, make it more attractive. Okay, we have some uh, citizens that wish to uh, comment. Uh, John Hugler, please. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and ladies and gentlemen of the board, I've been here before. We're still talking about a silk purse and a sow's ear. When I was here last time, they said they had a equipment corridor between these apartments, 24 inches wide. That's where they're going to get in there to work to do the new electrical and the new plumbing and the new sewer and all of this type of stuff. Has been talked around, I've been there for 60 years. They're going to widen baseline, it's coming one way or the other. And when baseline widens, they're going to take their parking lot. And then where are they going to park? Up and down the street. It just, that was built in a time when you could stuff the maximum number of people in the smallest square foot. They're going to make three bedroom apartments. They're just going to take the one next to it, probably cut a door, and that'll be three bedroom men. One living and dining room, one kitchen, and a bedroom and a two on the other side. They're talking about heating and cooling them through window units in the wall. That's not very practical. I just, I just see this going back the way it was. Now, they're making three bedrooms. How about if one of them comes and lives in them? They have kids. Let one of them come live in it a while. That'll do for an on-site manager, if that would happen. I've lived there forever. I've seen it change. I've seen it change for the better. I've seen it change for the worse. Right now, it's just sitting here stagnant. And stagnant's better than getting a bunch of people back in there and it goes south and everybody says, well, you know, we brought that up, but it wasn't in writing and it didn't happen. You know, the gates, we're going to... Channel traffic, that's fine. Do you leave a gate open? You go back down on the other end of baseline, you see gates open everywhere down there. They've all got wrought iron fences and gates, but they're never shut. If they're not shut, you go whichever way you want, which is going to be both of them streaming out on baseline. Baseline is so busy in the mornings, you can't hardly get out of it. We really need a traffic light at our driveway. Stribling's probably going to want one on their back gate so they can get in and out. It's just, uh, baseline's a very busy street, and it, it's very uh, overpopulated. West Baseline has grown how many quadruplings in the last 20 years? Now, that's all I got to say. I just, I just want to be sure that if they go back in, we have a route to do something if they don't... Uh, do what to say. Thank you, Mr. Hugler. You live across the street at 9906 Baseline, yes, is that right? Is yes, that directly across the street? No, no, no. That's on down. On down from there. Yeah. I, I'm the one that's lucky enough to have that big patch of woods next to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Director Wyrick may have a question for you. 
Okay. I knew I'd see you tonight. Yeah, somehow or another. And if it goes south, you'll see me many more times. I know, that's scary. Um, so the applicant has amend, amended his application where he will have on-site security 24 by 7. Okay. And all the things that we talked about are in the ordinance. In other words, he has to follow um, those To the rules. letter? Yes. He has to follow those rules. And uh, he has, uh, <clears throat> he has uh, said that he would have on-site security, um, those kinds of things. And Mr. Carpenter, is that true? He has to do, this is a part of the application, and he has to do all those things he said? Well, he's got to do what he said in the program and what's going to be kept with planning. I don't know have the right. entire He's, planning. They're, they're, they agreed to an on-site manager, manager, not on-site security. Well, Big manager, difference. I used the wrong term. Cameras. Yeah, and cameras and uh, security gates with codes to get in. A lot of those uh, locations down Stagecoach Road, they have what they call a passive gate. And uh, if they had real gates, then they'd have to maintain all their utilities and all their streets. So they have what they call a passive gate. So when you drive up to it, it automatically opens. They, they never lock it. That's what happens at Otter Creek and some of those others that are down the street. So that's why you see those open. You might have been talking about a different location than well, where Well, I'm those talking are. on down on East Baseline. East Baseline. I can't help Down you around uh, Pine Gardens and... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But your your passive gates are defeated by just laying a piece of metal on top of the loop like okay. that, and it stays open forever. Yeah, this is not a passive gate. Right. This is a this is a coded gate to get in. Okay, I just wanted to let you know Be that. Sure? I'm, yeah, that's uh, what he said. That's what he said. I've been listening. I know all he agreed to was the on-site manager. Yeah. Twenty-four by seven. Before it was, he, it was just a daily, you know, like right. nine to six or something like that. So now he's got twenty-four by seven. Okay. And Thank I know you. how that works because my wife used to manage Maryvale Apartments on the other side of uh, Walmart. Okay, how'd that work for her? I worked good when she had me for a bouncer. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, when she overseen Chico Apartments down there, you know, the ones they used to call Sin City, you like to never got them tore down. Yeah, that's true. They had to half burn, and that's that's my fear here, that, that once it starts slipping, it, it'll just be a quick downhill slide right yeah. back where it was. I know. I, I know what you went through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hugler. Uh, Letitia Hugler. Letitia, are, are you related? Yes. Sister. I'm his sister, and I his live sister. next door to him. I'm two doors down. He's so, three doors down. Okay, so, so you're two doors down from the property. You're not directly across the street from it. No. All right. Mm -mm. But I've lived there 60 years, chose to move back 17 years ago. And thankfully, we had notification through the mail that we could attend these meetings, and that's Good. what I'm assuming is the way the structure of the city of Little Rock is supposed to be, so mm -hmm. that you can come and voice your negative or your positive attitude towards it. I personally live in a concrete block house, mm -hmm. and I can tell you right now what they're planning on doing for heat is not going to warm those apartments. Because I and my dad built it to where it's virtually insulated itself because it's two concrete block walls with a dead air space. But that's the hardest house to heat. A motel heating and air system is not going to cut it. Also, if they've added three bedrooms, won't that add more parking places? Do I get an answer? If you have three no, bedrooms? It's actually less. It can be less. Well, I, we can let the staff respond to that, but it it, uh, it reduced the number of parking spaces per unit. That don't sound right to me. A three-bedroom house, you have, and I go back to back in the country where when you have a septic system put in, you have to put in so many feet of field line per bedroom. Well, I think, you know, if you have 
a couple living there with a couple of kids. They get to be 16. They're going to get cars. And you're going to have four cars, five cars, depending on how many children they have. But I just hate to see what it goes back to. Uh, and they may, without saying that I'm judging that they won't do that, but what I'd like to see is there going to be proof to the council that they put this much, this much money into it? And I wonder what financial institution would do that. Did they not go look at the property? Obviously, uh, our two council people that is in our area have gone and looked at it. And I have to disagree with them. That drop-off's not two foot. I grew up jumping off that drop-off. It's, it's at least three to four foot. The Washateria building is still there. They said it was gone, but it's still there. It has not been torn down. And there is people living in that house on Herrick Lane. I see them there. I see their cars. I pass by there every day. And their pictures they show of what it looks like. I guess they got out there and swept it up, but it don't look like that today. There's trash out. They cut the tree at the corner of Baseline and Winston Terrace and just let, when they trimmed the tree, they just let the branches fall down. And they never picked them up. And I would think if they want to be in our neighborhood, be in our neighborhood and make it look presentable. I try to keep our places looking good. I pick up the trash, and I swear I think people look for residents that keep their trash picked up, and that's where they throw it out. But it's never picked up out of their ditch. The parking lot's not picked up. The boards are down again. And even on their picture showed the second condemnation sign up there. So obviously, we're not the only ones that think the structures are probably not safe. I'm sure they're full of mold because I've had to fight mold in a concrete block house. They sweat, and people are allergic to mold, and I don't know how they plan on getting rid of that. But that's all I need to say about it. I'm just coming because we got the letter that it was to be on the agenda tonight, and I believe in standing up and saying what I say because you've asked me to come. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, Letitia. Uh, the next card I have is from Samuel Heron. 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 I'm her husband. I've been in construction my whole life. And, and you live in the same place that uh, Letitia does, I take it. 9, yes, 9900. 9, I've been there 17 years. And there's a flooding problem y'all need to address over there. Every time it rains, that where it drops off, them lower apartments gets water in them. So you know there's mold in them. And when you go to replacing the sewer, the water, and the drainage, you got a 24-inch gap that Speak you got to Speak to us in. if you would, please. I'm just curious how they're going to do all this for what they're saying. I don't think that's going to be enough money. I really don't. Because I've been in business myself. Sam's Excavation on Little Rock was me for 20 years before I decided to go to work for Pulaski County Road and Bridge. And I worked there 15 years. And now I've been working at North Little Rock City Street Department for about five months now. So, I mean, I'm all for if it's going to help the community because I do construction myself. I clean the ditches out. I put drainage in. I clear lots. So I understand what they're trying to do. And like the picture they showed y'all where it's right next to baseline, they've actually took part of baseline to make that picture look better. Well, that ain't going to work. That's a state highway. You can't do that. Basically, that's all I got to say, because right. if they're going to help us out, I'm all for that. But, you know, we come home one night. We had a man got shot, and he was killed, and his car running down baseline. He took out the corner of my fence and took out my mailbox. And I don't want that to happen again. That's kind of a weird feeling when you come home from work and there's a dead man sitting in your yard. I mean, what would you do? Well, I don't think that's part of this application. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heverin. Uh, Mr. Mitchell or Mr. Uh, uh, Giles, Martin, excuse me, uh, I uh, give you an opportunity to respond to anything that's been 
sure. uh, indicated, and then we'll try and get this matter disposed of. Yes, uh, we actually have addressed the, the drainage problem. We actually brought out our engineers, and we're actually, when we paved the, the parking lot, the curb guard, they have actually, but they have like a, a retention curb. That's built into the uh, parking lot, as well as we're going to dig it down just a little bit further and regrade it to where that it's going to end up draining out. That will it, That's the current path that it takes now. Um, as far as the... The amount of water, I really can't guarantee how, but it, it's the, the streets have been designed to carry the, that particular water out, from what I understand. Mayor, I can guarantee that they're going to do all of the code requirements necessary to make this project work. And, you know, I've worked with Public Works in a long time, and uh, they will comply, or uh, they'll get a caution or a, a visit by the planning department for violation of a, the PCD, so... PRD. So, uh, and uh, we've looked at drainage, we've looked at lighting, we've looked at landscaping, we've looked at traffic, uh, and we have not gotten any in objections with this current plan. And that plan has been worked a whole lot since April 19th when you saw it last. So, I can tell you that they'll comply with the codes. <sighs> And also, too, on the heating and um, heating and cooling they were talking about, the acclimation of the building, it is once it's concrete, once it becomes acclimated, it has actually become a radiant-type heat. And we are putting a two 1,500 uh, BTU units that's um, rated for um, about 800 square foot. We're putting two of them in. So one takes care of 800 square foot. We're putting one in the uh, bedroom and one in the living room, and that will acclimate the building. Okay. And it is it, it is and it's concrete top and bottom and sides and the 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 maintenance corridor that he was talking about it is designed that we we will be able to access the plumbing uh, points there will be an access panel in each one of the bath bathrooms as well as the kitchen. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Director Hendricks. Did you have a question? All right, go ahead, please, <coughs> Mr. Mr. Brzezinski. Brzezinski. Go ahead, Director Hendricks. Tony, I noted that Planning Commission, it was a nine, was that a nine from the planning or was it eight? Approval. Uh, Director Hendricks, <clears throat> the, planning me, the Planning Commission recommended approval, eight ayes and one no. Okay. What do you see uh, that would make you approve this application? Well, what's your complaint? We're concerned about the encroachment into the neighborhood with that purchasing that additional house. And as it's been described, this is a fragile neighborhood. And so we're, we're concerned again about potential impacts by moving this development more into the neighborhood than it is now. I didn't know you could base that same type of discrimination to me when you were talking about, you know, I live in, in that type of neighborhood, which you just described, but there's nothing I can do about it. Just had a killing or whatever at 30th and is it. So I think that's a, a real poor excuse to say that this is a type of neighborhood. I don't think staff has a right to say that. Tell me not in error. Uh, let me. Um, Mr. Yeah. Moore, I'm talking to Tony. Well, I feel compelled to, to respond since you... Uh, okay, alluded. what's going to be your reply? My reply is that I believe our staff is very consistent. In fact, we just dealt with an issue a few weeks ago or last year, very similar, where, where, where? Uh, at the Popeyes, where we felt like this building was encroaching into the neighborhood. And, 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 and so my point is, whether it's the Regents Bank in the Heights or Popeyes and Hillcrest or Stonecrest in the Southwest, if the staff, I think Tony's staff has been very consistent about encroaching in neighborhoods. And, and so I feel like we're being very consistent in, in that manner. Mm -mm. No, you're not. Because if Tom's, if Tony is saying that it's because of the type people that's coming in, and we, did, we I, did not say that over on Mark. I mean, I mean was, just, but what I'm telling you, what I'm saying, and I, I gave you examples of three different neighborhoods But that, I'm, that I'm that telling you, you're consistent. incorrect. There was no concern about encroachment of trouble in the neighborhood over at Popeye's. 
It was, it was at encroaching those, into a neighborhood. They, that did, was exact, they didn't want it. They it said, was exact issue. No, Bruce, they said that their children couldn't play. But what Tony just said to me, that in other words, you got a bad element coming into this area. That's discrimination. <clears throat> and I hope you all hear what I'm saying. OK. Director Hendricks, that's not uh, what I heard him say at all. He said <laughs> that the, they would be, con you know, I get a DVD. He was saying that the applicants were concerned about who would be coming in that neighborhood. And he, so are the, the board members were saying it. He said it was a fragile neighborhood and that encroachment. Well, what does fragile and, mean? Fragile means a residential neighborhood that can either stabilize or can go downhill. And why would you have to stabilize it? Well, because you've got a problem. You've not necessarily problems. You've got deals where people don't buy houses there anymore I'm because they don't that. think it's where they want. I understand you don't, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between that and a concern that encroachment of a business, which is what an apartment complex would be, into a residential neighborhood would further deteriorate the neighborhood. That's all but, he said from a planning right, standpoint. Let, let's, that that was, not, was not, not what I heard, and the tape will reveal what I heard, okay? Thank you, Director Hendricks. Um, okay, we've had uh, we've had dialogue and discussion on this matter. Let me go ahead and call for a vote. Uh, uh, all in favor of the passage of Ordinance 33, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say nay. Roll call has been requested. Madam Clerk. Director Hendricks. Director Richardson. Director Peck. Director Hines? Yes. Director Wright? No. Director Wyrick? No. Director Compuris? Aye. Director Fortson? Aye. Director Adcock? No. Vice Mayor Webb? No. no. Director Hendricks, would you like to change your vote? I'm Aye. sorry? Aye. Six to four. No, six to five to four. I'm sorry. Uh, the chair will elect to vote aye. Okay, that takes care of this particular matter. Thank you all. Mr. Hugler and Ms. Hugler and uh, Mr. Uh, Horan, I'm sure you'll keep us advised on their compliance with their obligations and responsibilities. Thank you. I hope they got a big checkbook. That ain't going to be enough money yeah. to do what they're supposed to do. <laughs> I've done it. I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we can now move on to the uh, public hearing that we have. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, go ahead, Director Anderson. I'm changing my vote to aye. You did. What? You already did. Okay. So they were all able to bill. That's correct. All right. Okay, we can move on to the public hearing. Let me go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing and ask for a reading of Ordinance Number 34. An ordinance to abandon a portion of the alley along the west side of Block 4, Deaf Mute Edition in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes, first reading. There's a motion to second to suspend the rules and place this ordinance on second reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Second reading, please. An ordinance to abandon a portion of an alley along the west side of Block 4, Deaf Mute Edition in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Second reading. We suspend the rules and place on third and final reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place this on third and final reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying nay. Third and final reading, please. An ordinance to abandon a portion of the alley along the west side of Block 4, Deaf Mute Edition in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Third and final reading. Okay, uh, is there anyone that wishes to speak either for or against this matter? 
Anyone who wishes to speak either for or against it? Hearing none, let me go ahead and close the public hearing and ask for a vote. All in favor of the passage of ordinance number 34, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying nay. Uh, the ordinance is passed. Um, we do not have any information for citizen communication. Uh, we've got a note about our graduation exercise for uh, recruit uh, police recruit school number 85 from Chief Buckner on February 3rd. I want to let everybody know about that graduation. And uh, is there anything else to come before the good of the order? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We're in adjournment. Thank you. <laughs>